In 2004, Davidson and Swithers published in the International Journal of Obesity a preliminary study that investigated the impact of rats consuming a saccharin-laced drink on weight gain. The rats that were accustomed to consuming sugar in the early part of the day compensated for the sugar by eating less lab chow later on. The rats that routinely consumed a saccharin-laced drink, on the other hand, never did compensate and continued to consume the same amount of chow and more, resulting in more significant weight gain. The next year, in 2005, Fowler presented at the 65th Annual Scientific Session of the American Diabetes Association preliminary findings that looked at the impact of drinking both diet and regular sodas on human health. The researchers were surprised by what they found. The risk for obesity was higher amongst people who drank diet soft drinks. And while their data did show that there was a risk of important weight gain associated with regular soft drink consumption, the graph here illustrates the degree to which diet soft drinks could possibly affect greater weight gain. In wanting to fully understand the mechanism behind the impact of diet sodas, Swither and Davidson did another study on rats. Their findings were again in close agreement with the possibility that an increased intake of sugar substitutes could promote increased caloric intake and body weight gain. The results of a large U.S. study in humans that studied the impacts of drinking soft drinks as well as sugar-free soft drinks on health were published in the American Medical Association's journal called Circulation. This study followed middle-aged adults and concluded that drinking more than one soft drink a day, even sugar-free diet brands, could be associated with an elevated risk of developing metabolic syndrome, which is really a cluster of factors that increase the chance of having a heart attack or stroke, or even possibly developing diabetes. The mechanism explaining why artificial sweeteners increased appetite and caloric intake is not clear. Certainly more research is necessary to unravel the mysteries of this mechanism. One thing does remain certain, and that is that the frequent ingestion of artificial sweetened beverages has not caused in any way a decrease in obesity at the population level. A number of studies on the question of diet sweeteners. Diet sweeteners could be anything from Splenda to stevia or any of the others and essentially we have no evidence from our work that any of the diet sweeteners have a differential effect quote unquote whether they're natural or unnatural however you want to define them no difference on what we eat however what we do know from research i've done and some other people is that there's two groups of people that consume diet sweeteners there's a group of people that are the big mac and diet sweetener group so they take a Diet Coke, and on the other hand, they eat their Big Mac or their huge pizza. And so they're using the diet sweetener and the diet beverages, the diet foods as a rationale to eat an unhealthy diet. That group of adults is only about a third to half of the adults. There's another half that take diet sweeteners, consume it in a healthy diet, and they actually lose weight, cut calories, and what happened in the last few years have been a couple studies. They grouped those two sets of adults together and therefore they showed that the, the risk of getting some kind of cardio, cardiovascular problem actually rose with the adults consuming the diet sweeteners. In our case, we took those, some of those same studies and we'll be publishing showing if you break up the diet and you look at the two groups, the unhealthy and the healthy eaters among the diet sweetener users, you find the opposite. The healthy eaters reduce their risk of getting uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, all the other problems related to heart disease and the diet sweetener group that eats the Big Macs and the chocolate cakes, they increase their risk. So indeed, uh, we still, from all the work we've done, we published a review this last year in the preeminent nutrition journal. We have no biological evidence and we have no other evidence at this point in time that says diet sweeteners cannot be part of a healthy diet and you can't lose, use them to reduce your weight or to cut your risk of any diabetes or other problems. However, there is a caveat. One of the issues we don't understand across the globe is what happens when you consume a sweetener, be it diet or other? Does it make you want more sweeteners? Does it habituate you to wanting more sweeteners? We don't know how to answer that. 
It is indeed a difficult question to answer, since the impact of the artificial sweeteners on the healthy eaters may be different than in the fast food and junk food eaters. It is likely that those obese subjects who are struggling more to embrace healthy eating habits may very well gain weight because the artificially sweetened beverages maintain taste preferences for sweetness. This invariably leads to the consumption of sweetened products high in sugar and fat and to inevitable weight gain. On the other hand, those obese subjects who embrace good eating habits and exercise in addition to regularly drinking diet sodas are likely able to keep the desire for sweetened foods in check by maintaining overall low caloric intakes because of healthy food selections and elevated energy expenditure through exercise.